Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me, and I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, 
I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 105 by whole verse. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God. Amen. Please be seated. Please let me begin by saying thank you. Thank you for having me today to get to serve with you all. My name is Anna. I am a bivocational Episcopal priest. I serve currently at Fort Liberty as an active duty Army chaplain, and it's an honor to be back up in Durham to get to spend Sunday morning with you all. It's also an honor to get to serve with Kate, your deacon, who I have known for over six years, who's been a rock for me in my entire ordained journey. So thank you all, and thank you to Reverend Rhonda for inviting me to be with you all today. Not only is being back up in Durham a trip down memory lane as I went to Duke Divinity School, our scripture today, in particular our Old Testament reading, is a trip down memory lane. I remember sitting in my middle school English class as my teacher explained the difference between main verbs and auxiliary verbs. I recall not thinking twice as she, about what she called auxiliary verbs or helping verbs. Those verbs that we know as be, being, is, are, am, was, were. To Anna in her middle school years, they all seemed obvious, unnoteworthy. It wasn't until I started learning languages that helping verbs gained significance in my mind. My mind transitioned the helping verbs from passive implied aspects of grammar to an active and intentional choice, central to my ability to express action and concepts. Then at some point in all of our education, I started learning of various philosophical movements. The discourse of the Enlightenment, in particular, gripped me. The Enlightenment was the first time that I was exposed to existential questioning. What is the state of human nature? What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be human well? We've likely all heard the refrain championed by the Enlightenment thinker René Descartes, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Then came along Baruch Spinoza, whose work can be colloquially summarized as, I feel, therefore, I am. These Enlightenment sentiments grapple with the concept of being. 
They take the, the verb to be, a verb that most of us learn as an auxiliary verb, and they center it as an emphatic, a declaration of being. I am. And yet, before Descartes, before Spinoza, before they wrestled with what it means to be human, to be alive, there was God. God who was and is and will be. God who spoke creation into existence. God from whom life was breathed into human form. And God from whom a burning bush on the side of Mount Horeb declared, I am who I am thereby establishing that we are because God is and committing God's self to actively journeying with God's people. So most of us in our adolescence likely heard the story of Moses encountering the burning bush. Moses is out one day tending to his father-in-law's flock when he sees a bush on fire, but not burning up. Moses' curiosity then takes over and he proceeds to check out the bush. A complete aside, but worth noting, is a point of inquiry for me is that I've always wondered what Moses did with the sheep for whom he was tending. I, I'm not a sheep herder, but I imagine maintaining a group of sheep while I'm off looking at a bush is not an easy task. That is not the point of the sermon, but I figured it was worth mentioning in case any of y'all's minds worked like mine and would get fixated on what does he do with said sheep. But Moses, you know, the sheep somewhere else, he approaches the bush, and the voice of God speaks to Moses, expressing that God has seen the Israelites suffering and promises to deliver them from Egypt to the land of their ancestors in the north. Moses then gets nervous, and he asks rather reasonably, what am I supposed to tell my people? That a voice in a bush told me, a sheep herder, that we will be saved from oppression and given everything ever promised to us? To which God says, tell them that I am sent you. God's response to Moses isn't an answer explaining who Moses is, but rather it is a declaration of who God is is, how God relates to God's people, and how God operates in our world. God chose Moses. God gave Moses his mission, his purpose. Moses became the Moses that we know Moses as because God was. God said to Moses, you are because I am. In this moment, the God who was and is and will be made God's self known to all of humanity, not as some passive, aloof, helping verb, but as a main verb, moving and acting and abiding in our world, breathing life into all of creation, giving purpose, journeying alongside us and partnering with us. So when we talk about God being called I am, we're not simply stating that God exists. We're not just expressing our faith that God is real. Instead, we are making a claim about what God's beingness means and what it means for us to be in God. <laughs> the form of to be that God uses when God tells Moses that I am sent to you is the same form of to be that is used in the creation story. The same form that is used to explain the relationships of people throughout generations. The same form that is used to express the generativity of our world. And the same form that's used when prophesying the coming of Christ. This means that we can know that God is operative in our world, not by some blind faith, but rather as is declared by God, God's self. And if God is operative, actively engaged in our world and with us, then we can know that love is operative, actively engaged in our world and with us. Because God is love.
This is what God's beingness is, and from where we derive what it means to be in God. To be in God, to be followers of God, is to be inspired by God's divine presence throughout history and God's divine presence in our day to day. It is to live a way of love, live in a way that creates, and live in a way that remembers the community. Though God chose Moses, one individual to whom to appear, God's message from the burning bush was for the collective, for the community. God used an individual, sent him back to his people, and then guided and cared for an entire community to include God's people today. So the story of God's beingness tells us that not only is God active in our world, but also that God's activity is communally or collectively minded. The story of Moses encountering God at the burning bush, it roots us in community. It begins by telling us about Moses' relationships to Jethro and Zipporah, his wife, that Moses was part of a tribe, a community bound together by kin and history. It continues with God reminding Moses of his ancestral lineage to whom land was promised. God then promises to be with Moses, so even if Moses feels alone, he is never actually alone. And then ends with God, sending Moses back to the others in the community to continue God's work as a community in our world. The great I am in whom we all move and breathe and have our being not only gave divine purpose to Moses, but also divine purpose to, enti to an entire community when God declared God's beingness. This divine purpose, which we now know is to spread love, to create hospitality, and to strive for justice and peace. That is the continuance of God's beingness in our world. And this, this is our mission as followers of God, as Christians. This is our identity, which ultimately means that we are because God is. Amen. As you are able, please stand to recite the words of our faith as found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. 
that we all will be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Remembering everyone on our parish prayer list, Lord, we pray you have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Remembering Virginia Callahan, mother of Bill Callahan. Remembering Professor Zizi Yan of UNC. Remembering Angela Michelle Carr, A.J. Laguerre, and Gerald Gallion of Jacksonville, Florida. And remembering everyone who has died by violence. We pray you, Lord, give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We all share Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for everyone who is targeted because of their race, ethnicity, gender, or other part of their identity, that we may come to live in communities guided by justice with compassion. Almighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace, and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you. My name is Kate, and I'm your deacon, and I want to give a huge St. Luke's welcome to Anna for being here today. Like she mentioned, this is super special to both of us, but also we appreciate her being here and teaching us at Adult Learning about what Army chaplains do and sharing her message with us. Um, there are many, many announcements. Uh, I know that there's a sign up for Pumpkin Patch in the back. There's a school wish list for LEAP. They started school this past week. Um, and renewal works. Good morning. 
I think we've all heard the uh, recommendation that when you're flying, you put that oxygen mask on yourself first. And this seems very counterintuitive to many of us who feel like we need to help the younger person next to us or the older person next to us. But all the research says that if you put that oxygen mask on yourself first, you are now better able to help the people next to you. And that is part of the theory of Renewal Works, that we're going to examine our own spiritual journey and answer questions about that so that then the Renewal Works people gathers all that research and brings it back to St. Luke's where we look at it and we see where are we collectively and where are different people it's all anonymous, but there's a group that might be here and a group that might be here. And then Renewal Works brings with their research um, information, ideas, best practices for how you take everybody where they are and help them move on with their spiritual journey. And that this is what they found promotes a vital congregation and a church that can go out and serve. So. When the uh, inventory, or really it's a survey, opens up on September 24th, we hope you all take it because we need everybody's thoughts. Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues on page 367 of the Book of Common Prayer and in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjugation under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of all your children. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the love of God, the grace of God, and the wisdom of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs>